Mowgli was far and far through the forest, running hard, and his heart was hot in him. He came to the cave as the evening mist rose, and drew breath and looked down at the valley. The cubs were out, but Mother Wolf was at the back of the cave, knew by his breathing that something was troubling her frog. What is it, son? she said. Some bat's chatter of Shere Khan, he called back. I hunt among the plowed fields tonight, and he plunged downward through the bushes to the stream at the bottom of the valley. There he checked for and heard the yell of the pack hunting, heard the bellow of a hunted samher, and the snort of a buck turned at bay. Then there were the wicked, bitter howls from the young wolves. Akila, Akila, let the young wolf show his strength. Room for the leader of our pack, spring Akila. The lone wolf must have sprung and missed his hold, for Mowgli heard the snap of his teeth and then a yelp as the samper knocked him over with his forefoot. He did not wait for anything more, but dashed on, and the yells grew fainter behind him as he ran into the croplands where the villagers lived. Figura spoke the truth, he panted, as he nestled down into some cattle fodder by the window of a hut. Tomorrow is one day for Akila and for me. Then he pressed his face close to the window and watched the fire on the hearth. He saw the husbandman's wife get up and feed it in the night with black lumps. And when the morning came and the mists were all white and cold, he saw the man's child pick up a wicker pot plastered inside with earth, fill it with some lumps of red-hot charcoal, and put it under his blanket to go out to tend the cows in the byre. Is that all? said Mowgli. If a cub can do it, there is nothing to fear. So he strode around the corner and met the boy, took the pot from his hand and it disappeared into the mist while the boy howled with fear. They are very like me, said Mowgli, blowing into the pot, as he had seen the woman do. This thing will die if I do not give it things to eat. He dropped twigs and dried bark on the red stuff. Halfway up the hill he met Bagheera with the morning dew shining like moonstones on his coat. Akela has missed said the panther. They would have killed him last night, but they needed thee also. They were looking for thee on the hill. I was among the plowed lands. I am ready. Look, Mowgli held up the fire pot. Good. Now I have seen men thrust a dry branch into that stuff, and presently the red flower blossomed at the end of it. Art thou not afraid? No. Why should I fear? I remember now, if it's not a dream— how before I was a wolf, I lay beside the red flower, and it was warm and pleasant. All that day Mowgli sat in the cave tending to his fire pot and dipping dry branches into it to see how they looked. He found a branch that satisfied him, and in the evening when Tabiki came to the cave, he told him rudely enough that he was wanted at the council rock. He laughed until Tabiki ran away. Mowgli went to the council, still laughing. Akela, the lone wolf, lay beside his side of the rock as a sign that the leadership of the pack was open, and Shere Khan, with his following of scrap-fed wolves, walked to and fro openly, being flattered. Bagheera lay close to Mowgli, and the fire pot was between Mowgli's knees. When they were all gathered together, Shere Khan began to speak, a thing he would have never dared to do when Akela was in his prime. "'He has no right,' whispered Bagheera. "'Say so.' He is a dog's son. He will be frightened. Mowgli sprang to his feet. Free people, he cried. Does Shere Khan lead the pack? What has a tiger to do with our leadership? Seeing that the leadership is yet open, and being asked to speak, Shere Khan began. By whom? said Mowgli. Are we all jackals to fawn on this cattle butcher? The leadership of the pack is within the pack alone. There were yells of, Silence, thou art man's cub. Let him speak. He has kept our law. And at last the seniors of the pack thundered, Let the dead wolf speak. When the leader of his pack has missed his kill, he is called the dead wolf, as long as he lives, which is not long as a rule. Akela raised his old head wearily. Free people, and ye two jackals of Shere Khan, for twelve seasons I have led ye, to and from the kill, and in all that time 
not one has been trapped or maimed. Now I have missed my kill. You know how the plot was made. You know how you brought me to an untried buck to make my weakness known. It was cleverly done. Your right is to kill me here on the Council Rock now. Therefore I ask, who comes to make an end of the lone wolf? For it is my right, by the law of the jungle, that ye come one by one. There was a long hush for no single wolf cared to fight Akela to the death. Then Shere Khan roared, Ah! What have we have to do with this toothless fool? He is doomed to die. It is the man-cub who has lived too long. Free people, he was my meat from the first. Give him to me. I am wary of this man-wolf's folly. He has troubled the jungle for ten seasons, Give me the man-cub, or I will hunt here always, and not give you one bone. He is a man, a man's child. From the marrow of my bones, I hate him. Then more than half the pack yelled, A man, a man, what has a man to do with us? Let him go to his own place. And turn all the people of the villages against us? snarled Shere Khan. No, give him to me. He is a man, and none of us can look him between the eyes. Akila lifted his head again and said, He has eaten our food. He has slept with us. He has driven game for us. He has broken no word of the law of the jungle. Also, I paid for him with a bull when he was accepted. The worth of a bull is little, but Bagheera's honor is something that he will perhaps fight for said Bagheera in his gentlest voice. A bull paid ten years ago, the pack snarled. What do we care for bones ten years old? Or for a pledge, said Bagheera, with his white teeth bared under his lips. Well, are ye called the free people? No man's cub can run with the people of the jungle, roared Shere Khan. Give him to me. He is our brother in all but blood, Akira went on. And ye would kill him here. The truth is, I have lived too long. Some of you are eaters of cattle, and others I have heard of that. Some under Shere Khan's teaching, ye go by night and snatch children from the villager's doorstep. Therefore I know ye to be cowards, and it is to cowards I speak. It is certain that I must die, and that my life is of no worth, or I would offer that in the man-cub's place. But for the sake of the honor of the pack... Little matter that, by being without a leader, ye have forgotten. I promise, if you let the man-cub go to his own place, I will not, when that time comes to die, bear one tooth against ye. I will die without fighting. That will at least save the pack three lives. More I cannot do. But if you will... I can save ye the shame that comes of killing a brother against whom is no fault, a brother spoken for and brought into the pack according to the law of the jungle. He is a man, a man, a man, snarled the pack. The most of the wolves began to gather around Shere Khan, whose tail was beginning to twitch. Now the business is in thy hands, said Bagheera to Mowgli. We can do no more except fight. Mowgli stood upright, the flower pot in his hands. Then he stretched out his arms and yawned in the face of the council. But he was furious with rage and sorrow. For wolf-like, the wolves had never told him how they hated him. Listen, you, he cried. There is no need for this dog's jabber. Ye have told me so often tonight that I am a man. Though indeed, I would have been a wolf to you to my life's end that I feel your words are true. So I do not call you my brothers any more. But dogs, as to a man, what ye will do and what ye will not do, that is not yours to say. That matter is with me, and that we may see the matter more plainly. I, the man, have brought here a little of the red flower which ye dogs fear. He flung the firepot to the ground, and some of the red coals lit a tuft of dried moss and flared up as all the council drew back in terror before the leaping flames. 
Mowgli thrust his dead branch into the fire till the twigs lit and crackled and whirled it above his head among the cowering wolves. Thou art the master, said Bagheera in an undertone. Save Akela from the death. He was ever thy friend. Akela, the grim old wolf, had never asked for mercy in his life, gave one piteous look at Mowgli as the boy stood, all naked, his long black hair tossing over his shoulders in the light of the blazing branch that made the shadows jump and quiver. Good, said Mowgli, staring around slowly and thrusting out his lower lip. I see that ye are dogs. I go from you to my own people, if they be my own people. The jungle is shut to me. I must forget your talk and your companionship, but I will be more merciful than ye are because I was all but your brother in blood. I promise that when I am a man among men, I will not betray ye to man as you have betrayed me. 